Welcome back everyone. So we're here with a new update tutorial and I found um, this is a way better insight on how to reverse proxy. So it's way easier, instantly done, and it takes little to no effort to do. So for, we're going to use Cloudflare still, but instead of using Caddy, this is for people with dynamic IP or CG NATs. So my IP recently changed. I've never had a dynamic IP, but I switched from Comcast to a Verizon home network, which has a dynamic IP. So let's show you how to set this up and get it working. Um, have a reverse proxy done through Cloudflare without any issues whatsoever. And no external or internal IPs will be needed other than your local host and Cloudflare. So once you've logged into Cloudflare, uh, we don't. We, you make sure your your whole DNS zone is run cleared. If you have any DNS zones, C names, A names, whatever, then you want to log into Zero Trust. So it's just Cloudflare, and you just type in Cloudflare Zero Trust, or I'll leave a link in the description. Click on login on the top. I'm gonna do that real quick while I pause. So once you've logged in your dashboard, you're gonna click on Zero Trust. Okay, so once we're in Zero Trust, we're gonna go to Gateway, DNS locations. And we're going to add a new location. So you always going to do this for your gateway so it keeps and maintains your IP address. So basically doing this, we're going to select these two boxes, enable default DNS location, and enable eDNS client sublocation. We're going to name this, I don't know, Verizon Home. And then we'll click Add an IP. And we can click Update Current IP. And it'll give us a current IP. Mine's going to be blurred out, but this is where it is. Click on Add Location. Click on Proceed. Uh, you probably won't get this error, but I do. And then once you do that, I've already set up mine. You'll get this DNS IPv4 and IPv4.2. You want to take these, and depending on if you have more than one location, if you're going to use multiple computers, I recommend just putting it in as your DNS on your router. Um, you can look that up on your own. I'm not really going to show you to do that because it's pretty self-explanatory. But for this one, we're going to do it on our local um, host. So any computer you want to run this, you just put this IPv4 and it'll auto update your IP address, your dynamic IP when it updates. So you want to go into a control panel. You can just type in either in a file browser or you can just type in on the search control panel. Once we're there, we go into network and internet, network and sharing center. Go into uh, this, click on the connection. So you should see like your ethernet or your Wi-Fi adapter. Click on properties. Then we're gonna go into our protocol, TCP IPv4 internet protocol version. Click on properties. Then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna change our IP address for our DNS. So you have to manually type it in. So for example, mine is 192.168.1.111. My subnet mask is here and my default gateway is here. This may vary for you. You can you can figure this out by going to terminal and typing IP config, and it'll give you your um, default gateway, subnet mask, and IPv4 address. Once you've done that, you've inputted these two IP addresses. You want to put this one in the first box, and this one in the second box. Once that's done, click OK, click Close, click Close, and close out of this. And now you should have updated your IPv4 mask. So now anytime your dynamic IP changes, it'll show up in here and register with your Cloudflare account. So once we're in our Cloudflare dashboard, we're going to go down to Access and click on Tunnels. And we'll click on Create a Tunnel. Then we're going to name our tunnel name. We'll just name it Home or, like, I don't know, Second... PC or whatever you want to name it, it really doesn't matter. We can only name it once, just so you know. So we're on Windows, so we're going to um, grab this download link, and this is going to automatically download this for us. Gonna, um, put this in our downloads. And then once it's downloaded, we can click Run. Click OK. <clears throat> and we'll click Run anyway. It's here. This is going to install it as a kind of command. So it's going to install it so there's a command window. So then we take this code, we open up. If you have command prompt open, just close it out and reopen it as administrator. So you just, if you're in terminal, you can either right click on it and right click again and click open as administrator. If PowerShell is open, if you're in terminal, you click on this little drop down 
and then click Control, Shift, and then click on PowerShell, and it'll open as admin. And then we're going to paste this command, and now it's in. If you ever need to remove this command, you just kind of copy and paste the same command uh, from the clipboard, and then you click, instead of install, you do uninstall. Just so you know, but I'm not going to do that. Once that's done, click next. Then you're going to go into our subdomain. So this is where we set up our domain. So we're just going to type in, um, if I want to make it a subdomain, we'll just make this like request. And we'll make this, uh, I don't know, make it one of my other domains. And then we'll type in our uh, our, dom our HTTP. And then we do local, if it's on our local host. So if it's on this computer, we'll do local host the port so 5055 if that's your port and bam it's all ready now what I have to do now let me fire that instance up in my docker and I'll show you what it looks like okay so once we've done that uh, we made that look here's my uh, localhost 55 it's localhost 5055 look at this if I type in requests dot my domain Bam, loads up instantly. Now something you want to do with this is if you're doing this, you're going to, want to set up a couple settings in your actual um, domain. So one thing you want to do is you want to go into uh, caching. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, go into uh, configurations. And you're going to add a, I'm sorry, not caching. You want to go into caching rules. Create a rule, select our domain. So we do SSL TLS under the whole domain. We type in our domain. We can just give it any name you want. I'm just going to put my domain. Bypass cache. Deploy. Okay. Now that entire domain is bypassing the cache. You also want to add a page rule. So we're going to go to overview. And we're going to go to page rules. And we're going to create a page rule. And we're going to type in our page rule. Just type in your domain. And then a forward slash and a star. And then we're going to do go to cached level. And we're going to do bypass. And then save and deploy. And you can make up to three of these. So if you're using it for Jellyfin, I would highly recommend you make it... Um, you know, TV or whatever your Jellyfin subdomain is. For me, I'm just going to make my page rule, which is requests. Um, and this is definitely a must because if you don't, you could get banned for um, uh, too much media streaming. They track how much you stream in here. If you notice, um, they, they track how much you stream in here. So you can see how much um, visitors, total requests, they can see the cache and, and how much you use. So something to be wary of. But it's that simple. And then when you want to add a new one, you just click add a public host. And let's say we want to add one for, I don't know, um, photos for image. So do photos, levelsdesigns.net. And then you just type in HTTP, add your local host and your port, which is uh, 8233. I'm sorry, 2833. Click save host name and it's done. Let's say you want to add one for um, a different IP that's not inside your network. So you do photos. And we're going to go. Technically, if it's on another PC, you'd have to do this again with another um, uh, tunnel. So if you have a second PC, like a third PC, you just click on tunnels, create a new tunnel. And we'll put on first PC, save tunnel. And then you just run this again on the other PC and you just keep going forward with what you're doing. It's that simple. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave a like. This I found is way better than Caddy, especially if you have a dynamic IP and it loads a lot faster. And you don't have to worry about any extra configuration setup. So you guys enjoy? Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks, guys. Bye.